Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another one. My last video, we talked about, you know, the Ben Simmons, James Harden trade. I really broke down my opinion on the uh, 76er side of it. So let's get into the Brooklyn side of it. Let me know down in the comments who y'all think won the trade. Did Brooklyn win the trade or did the Sixers win the trade? As I said in my last video, I honestly think both teams got what they wanted out of it. So I think it was kind of like uh, a win-win, as much as a win-win trade as you could possibly have. Now for this video, I was gonna do Ben, Kyrie, and KD, but with KD being hurt and me posting a bunch of KD videos the past couple weeks, I figured, you know what? Let's go with Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons on the twos in NBA 2K22. Make sure y'all drop a like, subscribe if you guys are new. I am back on my point forward build. And before y'all spam me in the comments, if you want the link to this build, it will be in the description, okay? I'm not gonna show you how to make it in this video. Uh, y'all keep yelling at me in the comments. Show how to make the build. Like, I already have a video on how to make it. All you gotta do is go search through the channel, but I will leave the link in the description, all right? But check it out. Ben Simmons to Brooklyn. As I said, I think both teams got what they wanted. Harden wanted out. Ben Simmons wasn't going to play for the Sixers. Obviously, the Nets received a lot. They got, I think, two first round picks. They picked up Seth Curry, who I think is a very, very valuable piece. They got Andre Drummond. Let's get into some gameplay, by the way, but they got Andre Drummond. Now, Drummond was with my Lakers. The stats look good. He puts up crazy rebound totals. He has deficiencies as a player but for the Nets roster I think it was a decent piece that they added something that they you know they can definitely use but let's talk about the main piece of the trade Ben Simmons Ben Simmons James Harden obviously now Ben Simmons hasn't played in a while so just like this gameplay right here he might be looking a little rusty when he comes out now I don't even think that at the time of recording this they don't even have a date that they are like a game that they are planning for him to make his debut. I was just looking at it and they were saying they still aren't sure when he's gonna make his season debut. So we're gonna have to wait to see how it actually turns out and how it does fit. But in my opinion, just like you're gonna see this gameplay, this game, this first gameplay, it just shows Ben Simmons, like it's just his skill set, like what he does well in terms of defending, rebounding, playmaking. This gameplay shows his skill set, and I think that skill set fits way better with the Nets roster than it does with the 76ers roster. And let me explain. I, I touched on it on my last video, but let me go into detail. The first thing, obviously the Nets, something that they lacked before, they had a crazy roster before. Don't get me wrong. The roster has been, in, you know, when you have three of the best ISO players to ever touch the basketball on the same team, your roster is insane. But Brooklyn didn't really have any great like one-on-one -on -one defenders, you know what I mean? Like you go up and down that roster, there's a lot of guys that, you know, you say their weakness is defending. Makery, can we make a shot? You go up and down that roster, Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, Patty Mills, you know, the list goes on and on. They're not exactly great defenders. So you add a guy in Ben Simmons who's tall, long, athletic, a very, very good defender. That's something that they didn't have on that roster. So that's gonna help in that aspect. Now, you can put Ben Simmons out in a situation out on the court where he's surrounded by four shooters basically at all times, whether, you know, it's Seth Curry, Patty Mills, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, or Joe Harris is hurt right now, I think, but when he comes back, then on top of it, even at the five right now, LaMarcus is basically playing the most minutes at the five, and LaMarcus is deadly in the, like, lethal in the mid-range, and he can step it back and shoot the three, you know, if need be. So, you can surround Ben Simmons at all times with shooters, which gives him space, which basically alleviates his big weakness, which is the fact that, you know, he can't shoot. And, and listen, before y'all start commenting, I saw a video in practice, Ben Simmons shooting. I saw Ben Simmons working with Kyle Korver in practice. He's going to come out shooting threes. Listen, if he does, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be funny as hell. I'm going to be all over social media making jokes about it. And good for him if he's able to do that. But until we see that, we have to assume that Ben Simmons Simmons that Brooklyn is getting is the Ben Simmons we have seen for years and years and years. As you can see by the box score, I mean, Ben Simmons just filling up the stat sheet even in 2K22 in the park. But I'm going to start shooting on this build, honestly, because the build could shoot and who knows? Maybe Ben Simmons is going to come out and he's going to be able to shoot. So you're going to enjoy Ben Simmons shooting step back, pull up jumpers in the gameplay. But until we see it in real life, we have to assume we're getting the Ben Simmons that we all know. And that's a guy that is not going to shoot jump shots. And when he does, it's not going to be at a very high percentage. Okay. Okay, so with that being said, I think this roster fits his play style better because by surrounding him with shooters, it almost alleviates 
you know, that pressure or that, you know, that he needs to shoot. He doesn't need to. You can be the guy in the dunker spot at all times. You can be the guy attacking the paint and not having to worry about anyone else being down there. I mean, you think about up and down that roster, the only one that doesn't shoot is Andre Drummond. And you could basically stagger the minutes basically to the point that they're never on the floor at the same time together. So one thing in Philly that I always felt like it wasn't really a match made in heaven. They were still a good, you know, duo, you know, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid when they were both healthy at the same time. But it wasn't a perfect fit because Joel likes to do a lot of his damage on the block. So where is Ben Simmons going to go when Joel's on the block? Like he has to go to the other dunker spot, the other block, basically, which then collapses the defense. They're able to help on Joel a lot easier. We're out here getting snatch blocks on our Ben Simmons. I mean, come on, baby. You know, we get the clips in the gameplay while we talk about the NBA information. Come on, baby. Make sure y'all subscribe if you're new, man. Come on. We're on that grind to a million subs. I appreciate anybody that does. But it wasn't really a match made in heaven. I think Harden and Embiid is a better fit than Simmons and Embiid. And I also think Simmons' skill set will be utilized much more effectively with this Brooklyn Nets roster. Now, who comes out on top? Who ultimately wins the trade? Does either of them end up winning a championship? We'll have to wait and see. But overall, I think it was a win-win for both teams. And I think both fan bases should be happy with what they got out of the deal. You see a lot of times when... A superstar or an all-star whatever you want to consider you know Simmons and Harden you see when they're disgruntled that teams end up losing out because it's like other teams know okay your star player wants out I'm not gonna overpay you or so a lot of times I'm not even gonna give you equal compensation because I know he wants out and you're not gonna want to lose him for nothing in free agency but I think both teams made out well here. They both got a guy that can help the roster. You know, the Nets got a bunch of nice small pieces to go around what they already have. And then, you know, Philly got what they want. I think they also got Paul Millsap, which, I mean, we'll see if, you know, that's even a factor. But they got uh, James Harden. And we know Daryl Morey loves James Harden. That's his guy. It's going to, you know, they're going to be happy. I think Joel's happy that at least he has a guy next to him that's going to play. You know, before, you know, his second best player on the team wasn't even willing to play anymore. So he was out there not by himself. Obviously, you know, they still have a nice roster around him. But he was missing that second star. Now he has a superstar next to him in James Harden. Two of the best, you know, one-on-one -on -one players that we have in the league so it's going to be very very interesting to see how it plays out and honestly if we get seven games in the playoffs of Sixers versus Nets I think it'll be <laughs> it will be an amazingly entertaining series from the storylines to the basketball itself it's going to be something that we all want to see now the aftermath of this trade I saw some interesting takes people were saying this is the end of the super team era like it just shows that, you know, Kyrie, Harden, KD, like you can't keep three bona fide superstars happy for a long period of time on the same team. Now, I think there was a lot of like factors that contributed to the, the you know, that whole team just kind of like imploding. Part of it was injuries. Part of it was the whole vaccine mandate, Kyrie not being willing to do it. So then James Harden was upset because, okay, KD's out. Kyrie's only playing half the games. Like, I'm out here by myself. Like, it's not what we signed up for. We were all supposed to be sacrificing. He felt like Kyrie wasn't, you know, there's a whole bunch of different factors that went into the team imploding. I don't think it's the end of the super team era. I think when teams have the opportunity to pair three superstars together, they know what they're getting into. It's not something that's going to last for a decade. Like, you're, you're doing it to try to win a title or two in the short term. You know, you're, you're, you're signing up for like a two, three, maybe four year period where you're just title or bust. Like you're not doing it thinking, well, we're gonna have these three guys for the next 10, 12 years. It just, it's too, there's too much volatility involved in it. There's too many egos. It's not gonna last that long. I mean, you even see with Golden State, right? You When you added KD to it, it was like three years, it was it. They were at each other's necks. Draymond and KD were at each other's necks. It wasn't gonna work anymore. KD didn't feel appreciated. Enough. Like there's always all these factors. A lot of them, most or most of them psychological. You know what's gonna happen with these super teams, but I don't think it's the end of teams trying it. If a team has the opportunity to go for a title, then they can pair two, three superstars to Together, they're gonna try to do it like why wouldn't they go for it but I think the balance in the league right now is very very entertaining I mean you could predict right now in the comments who you think is gonna come out of the East who you think is gonna come out of the West and you're gonna see tons and tons of different answers we're, we're way past the years where it was like well it's gonna be LeBron's team out of the East and it's gonna be the Warriors out of the West you can't make that prediction anymore. Like there's literally like, I would say five, six teams that could come out of each conference and you can make a legit argument for. 
It's great for entertainment. It's going to be great for the playoffs. I can't wait to watch. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed the video. Make sure y'all drop a like. Subscribe if you guys are new. I'll catch y'all in the next one. I'm out. Peace.